Hey YouTube, it's me, your favorite nurse B. So today we're gonna talk about biomedical ethics. Yes, I know it sounds extremely boring. Yes, I know. But it's not, it's totally interesting, especially if you're going into the healthcare field or you're in the healthcare field or just in general, it's just, it's a really interesting um, topic as human beings. I think it's really interesting and we should learn about it. So especially about this lady here. Henrietta Lacks. Okay, so basically, African American woman back in 1951, she noticed that she was, you know, having bleeding from her vagina and she just wasn't feeling right. She had a lump and she just wasn't feeling right. So she went to the doctor. She actually went to John Hopkins uh, University, the hospital. She went there and at the time they were basically, um, they they cared for a lot of sick poor people and i think i kind of understand why they did but anyways they care for a lot of sick poor people so she went there and she she got seen by a gynecologist and they took a biopsy of the the lump sent it to the lab she did have cervical cancer so not only did they send it to the lab they sent it to this doctor dr g and this doctor for years had been trying to um basically he was dealing with cell culture so what he was trying to do he was trying to take human cells put them in some type of medium and what he actually used was um chicken um chicken blood like of living chickens like he would actually go to barns and put um, a catheter into their hearts and get the blood and that's the medium and he would mix it with other nutrients and that's the medium that he would use to try to grow these human cells. So his theory was that if we can grow human cells outside of the human body in these mediums, then we can use these cells to um, identify just so many things about the human body. So we can, we can use these cells to test um, vaccines, to test medications to do everything without actually having to use a human subject and you know screwing up that human we could just use their cells so for years he was doing this and like all the cells were dying so when he got Henrietta Lack cells they started growing which it wasn't a big deal to begin with because they had plenty of cells that were growing for a while then they died but hers just kept growing and kept growing and kept growing and kept growing so he was like great we're in there Basically, he um, he was shipping them out to different places, to different people. Anybody that he came across that was a scientist, he would give it to them, let them use it, and making money off of it. And Henrietta had no idea this was happening. And basically, she died within that same year of being diagnosed with cervical cancer. So this went on for years and years and years in so many different um, medical marvels medical uh discoveries happen just based off of her cells and they call them HeLa cells because what they would do what they would name the cells based off of the fir the first two initials of the first name and the last name so that's why it was HeLa cells so they were able to cure polio with her cells um they were able to um even the hpv vaccine that we have is because of her cells um, animal vaccines, beauty products were tested on her cells or still are tested on her cells. Um, gene mapping, um, HIV, they were able to do that, uh, test HIV uh, medications on her cells and cancer and everything. Like, it's amazing when you really look into it and just be like, wow, like all the money and all the careers and Nobel Peace Prizes and just so much that has happened behind this woman. And she didn't know at the time her family didn't know at the time and it wasn't until years later so in 1926 i mean 19, 1926 1976 so she she passed away in 1951 in 1976 there were some geneticists right after that realized that they could use her cells for gene mapping right at the beginning um it was some geneticists that wanted to cure cancer so basically you know we know that ever since cancer has been discovered it's been something that just scientists have put so much resources into like there's been a war on cancer there's been campaigns for that you know and anyways geneticists were like okay 
we need to look at her genetics. And of course they couldn't look at it. She was already passed away. So it was like, okay, let's get in touch with her family. So they went back to um, Baltimore and they contacted her family. They were able to get blood from the family. And they they were like, why are you, you know, why do you need this? Like she's been gone for so long. Yeah, we've been working with your mom's cells for years. And they're just, the family's just like, seriously like what do you mean like i had no idea this was happening like how does that work so you know they've been working they were they still got the blood i don't even know like what was signed or what happened that i don't know for sure but anyways they got their blood and they were able to even do even more with it because they had the actual genealogy of Henrietta Lacks and to see what is so specific about her cells that it's able to grow the way it grows and just just so much more um, opened up when they were able to get blood samples from the family. So the question is, is just like, how is this even right? How is it okay for a doctor to take a part of your body out of you and to test it, of course, and to use it to make money and to, I mean, her cells even freaking went up um, on a spaceship. Like it's, it's just crazy like how how is this able to happen and the family not know like i totally don't get it so yeah i'm sure she signed some type of consent to get medical treatment some type of consent to get surgery because she did go through um radiation so just but did she she didn't know that this was all going to happen she didn't know that 20 years later 30 40 years later we're still going to be using her cells to cure all these different things um, and the family didn't know and of course the family has not gotten any money back any money whatsoever um, The courts basically they're just like no, it's it's you don't have ownership of it once it comes out of the body It's it's you don't you don't own it. I guess because you signed the consent So anyways, I did some research and there's this thing called the common rule when it comes to informed consents. so basically this is what it says the common rule does not permit research without the consent of the research participant in certain circumstances. First, the common rule applies only to human research uh, participants, termed human subjects, defined as living individuals with whom the investigator interacts or about whom the in investigator obtains identifiable private information. Okay, so um, so this common rule is basically saying that it's only, the consent only covers humans. Okay, we get that, great. Um, so therefore, if research is conducted by using anonymized or anonymous subjects or um, unidentified samples, only in the research don't have and the researchers do not have access to the patient's private information then this research by definition would not be human subject research and would not require informed consent so my interpretation of this i'm not a lawyer and you know just a little law jargon i'm not a lawyer but my interpretation of this is basically so say for instance i sign a consent and i say okay you can take some of my breast tissue but i do not want you to use any of this breast tissue for um research that has to do with um cloning i don't want i don't want anything to do with that okay cool yeah sign a consent you we're not going to use your cells for cloning but if they take my cells and they don't put and they don't when they're using it they don't identify it as brandy's cells then it's fine that my the consent I sign is like null and void it's just whatever that's my interpretation of it. I mean I could be completely wrong but that's pretty much how I see it and as far as it being um monetized like how how I, I, just, I just can't wrap my head around how the courts are saying that you don't have to pay someone when you use a part of their body and you make money off of it i guess because when you sign a consent in some way you're saying that it's okay like if you sign a consent to say oh you can use my blood for research okay in a way you're saying yeah you can use my blood for research that i know that is eventually going to help to cure a disease and you're going to make money off of it yeah so i guess in a way you are kind of signing away your rights 
to any type of money. You know, but I think when people are in the situation of signing a consent, they're signing it. Yeah, you can use it. I don't care. As long as that research that you're doing helps me out in some type of way. But of course, I mean, it doesn't always happen. Like these research, this stuff goes on for years, decades. People die before there's even a cure for anything. So I just, it's just, it, it is crazy. It baffles me that, that this is okay. I don't know if I'm more... I guess like in our society, we just put so much power into physicians, into scientists, because they take on the burden of going to school and taking all that time and energy into doing this research. And we just kind of see them as these beacons of hope. And we just put so much into them and say, you know what, you all are going to do right by us. You're going to take on all the time and energy to help us as people. You know, we just kind of push them into like, I don't know, we just put them on a different level and kind of give them free range to just do whatever needs to be done to help as many people as possible. And I just, I find that to be crazy as heck. Like uh, to me, that's just, I, I don't get it. I guess we can say, you know, Henrietta wasn't harmed when they used her cells. So it is ethical or, you know, so much was able to be accomplished. So it's ethical. Or we can say that um, she did sign a consent. We don't know exactly what the consent said, you know, so she was aware that they were taking a part of, you know, they took a biopsy. She was aware they took a biopsy. She knew what was going on. So it's it's ethical, it's okay, it's cool. You know, why does it matter if the family knew or not? Because it's all about that physician and that patient. So why does it matter if they knew what was going on? They, they don't have to know, right? Privacy shows us that they don't have to know. Okay, so basically there's another, there's another case. A man had a, a splenectomy, so he's had his, his spleen removed. And he, uh, one of the scientists took a part of the, the spleen and he used that cell to, uh, he patented that cell and he made money off of it. So this man, he, he sued them and basically it says that he asserted that, um, it was a conversion. Basically, when a party takes away or wrongfully assumes the right to goods which belong to another. So he was saying that he pretty much took ownership of my sales and he profited from it. The court dismissed the conversion claim, holding that current state law did not support a conversion claim. And creating such a claim would unreasonably burden medical research what i'm not getting it so just because it's not a law we're not going to even try to make a law or try to you know see if this is even ethical or right we're not going to see that because it would be too much of a burden on the medical community for us to even say that you know he should have never did it because when this man got this splenectomy he didn't sign the consent for it to be used for the purposes that it was used for but they say it would be too much a burden on the medical community to to um to have to i guess inform people of what they're going to use their 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 cells for or their body parts for would, that would be a burden and what's so interesting about this to me is that it makes you think about everything like when you give blood are they using that for something else or they're actually going to use that to give blood to somebody else when you um or when you go and you get like a blood sample drawn for some labs there's still going to be some blood left over are they going to use that blood you know for something else are they going to hold on to it and use it for something else can they and it just makes you wonder like how much research research is out there um, because people don't know what's being used uh, from their bodies and is it okay like so why is it okay and why are we protecting um, the medical community or scientists you know when they're supposed to be doing all they can for us like to help 
you know, humankind, right? So it's, I don't know, it's, it's very interesting, you know, and it makes me think about this part here in the book. Let me read it to you all. So it came a point where some scientists were saying, oh, you know, HeLa cells really, they're not even, if you look at it, it's not even connected to Henrietta Lacks like n any longer. Like her DNA is not even in these cells anymore. And so another scientist was like, you know, this is ridiculous. So he said, scientists don't like to think of HeLa cells as being little bits of Henrietta because it's much easier to do science when you disassociate your materials from the people they come from. And to me, that pretty much sums everything up um, as far as that distinction between seeing what you're doing is affecting people and it comes from people and it's supposed to help people, but you completely kind of have a blind eye to the fact that, you know, you might be hurting people or you might be using people and just to, in some ways, just to make money or just to get some type of recognition or just to write, you know, a journal, write um, an article in a journal or anything like to get a prize or to be noticed. And it, it doesn't come down to that person and you're, what you're using their body for. And especially, you know, this woman, like I said, there's so many different things that just this woman's cells was able to accomplish and still are accomplishing to this day. So, so here's my question. Do you think that it's okay that, or it should be legal, illegal to take parts of a human body and use it for research without them knowing that you're using it or without them knowing what research you're using it for or without them getting compensation. Also, do you think that since it's not a, you know, human subject that's actually being tested, then the, the laws, you know, should be different that we shouldn't, you know, put so much emphasis on, you know, what's, what it's being used for because it's not an actual person. You're not harming anybody. You're just using a part of somebody. And then also tell me, do you think that, you know, these cells or these things that are taken out of somebody's body actually belongs to them? Is that their ownership? And if it is their ownership, shouldn't they get paid for it? Or whose ownership is it? Also, let me know if you think that, um, in any shape or way that the family, do you think that the family should get compensation? Do you think that um, the family should get some type of recognition? Do you, what do you think um, should happen? Do you like, or should it just keep on going on the way it's going on? Chuck it up to the fact that, you know, the times where it happened, a poor black woman in the 1950s, you know, it is what it is. Like you can do whatever you want to do. Or the fact that since so much has happened that she was able to, so much was able to be accomplished with her cells that we should just be like, wow, that's great. It's, a, it's, you know, if she would have never went there and we, and if Dr. G would have never taken those cells and used it for what he used it for, then we would not have what we have today. At least maybe we would not have had it as quickly as we, you know, um, have had it today because of that um, and so we should be happy and we should kind of see her as being like you know just like a heroine in the story of medicine so let me know what you all think um i hope that this was interesting for you all i hope that you all you know look more into henrietta lax and her life and all the many 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 things that have been able to uh, be accomplished because because of her and this Ar arthur is amazing like i'm no one knew about it until her book came out. Nobody knew what was going on really on a mainstream until she wrote this book. Like, yeah, pretty darn awesome. So I hope that was interesting. It shed some light on biomedical ethics and made it seem a little bit more interesting. Um, it just kind of blows your mind uh, as far as what's really going on out there in the world. Like what is happening? Like it, it kind of puts conspiracy theories like to an even bigger level as far as like, what are they doing out there? Like, oh my gosh. And just an interesting little tidbit, um, after Henrietta died, they used, uh, they opened up what they call was a HeLa factory. So basically they made, they went to Tuskegee Institute of all places and they actually built this huge factory 
that was like it had like special ventilation and all this other crazy stuff just to go into Gila, um what do you call it like research and this was happening at the same exact time that Tuskegee uh, study was happening as well the same exact time that they were not treating african-american men for syphilis and telling them that they were treating them so it was happening it's just so crazy that like it just is it's crazy y'all it's just crazy read the book please all right thanks